Welcome back. The St. Lucia Bankers Association is appealing to the public to play its part to curb the spread of COVID-19. President Carol Mangal says that if the current COVID-19 trajectory continues, the delivery of services to customers will be severely impacted. The surgeons of COVID-19 in St. Lucia has left no sector untouched. From having to work remotely to limit contact, as well as its members being directly affected by COVID-19, the financial services sector has been severely impacted by the pandemic. President of the St. Lucia Bankers Association, Carol Mangal, says that while members make every effort to provide services to the public, they can only do so in the safest way possible. The health and well-being of our clients and employees have been of paramount importance to us. And as such, where there were COVID impacts, we have taken the necessary action in accordance with the guidance from our health professionals. Each identified COVID positive case amongst our employees results in a number of their colleagues also going into self-quarantine while they await the results of their own COVID-19 PCR tests. We know this has impacted the delivery of in-brand services to you and we apologize for the inconvenience caused. Mangal says that if cases continue to rise and members need to be quarantined, this will greatly affect the delivery of services to customers. The Bankers Association of St. Lucia therefore appeals to the citizenry to support the authorities by doing your part, adhering to the protocols, wearing your mask, standing six feet away from the person in front of you and the person behind you when you are on a queue. Our members will continue to do our utmost to sanitize frequently touched surfaces in an effort to ensure your safety while you are on our premises. We also take this opportunity to remind St. Lucians that a lot of your banking needs can be handled on our online platforms from the comfort of your homes. The association continues to advocate for individuals to remain home and stay safe. For the Hot 7 News, Nisha Charles reporting. While many businesses will be affected as the island enters a seven-day state of emergency with only essential businesses allowed to operate, manufacturing of goods for local consumption as well as export is expected to continue as normal. During the address to the nation on Tuesday night, the president of the St. Lucia Manufacturers Association, Margaret Daisy, addressed the state of the sector. As manufacturers, we will continue to follow the protocols and support the measures to protect lives at our manufacturing operations as we do not want to compromise safety for profit. As manufacturers, we also support the need to safely remain operational in order to service local demands and also our export markets. To date, we are pleased that none of our plants have had to close due to in-house spread of COVID-19. There have been dialogue with us as stakeholders, and we support the government's proposal to protect lives. She made a special appeal to members of the public to adhere to the COVID-19 protocols and to keep in mind that the bare minimum is not enough in the fight to safeguard lives. We urge persons to also encourage other persons who they are in contact with, especially at home, to follow the protocols as sadly one can do everything in their power to follow the protocols themselves. But if their household contacts don't, then they become at higher risk to contact the virus. We will continue to operate our manufacturing plants with safely in, safety in mind so we can remain available to supply food and other products to our people while keeping some persons employed. Daisy says the St. Lucia Manufacturers Association fully supports the revised protocols and manufacturers will endeavor to meet consumer demands. The government of the Republic of China on Taiwan is facilitating Mandarin language training for over 200 public officers. More in this report from Julita Peter. Mandarin is the official language of the Republic of China, Taiwan, making it the most dominant language in education, business and media. 
An overwhelming 200 plus public servants have applied through the Department of the Public Service Training Division to participate in the online program, which commences on February 8, 2021. Mandarin instructor Ms. Ting Ting Lu, who is in St. Lucia, will be conducting the Mandarin training on behalf of the Taiwan International Cooperation and Development Fund. She said the course comprises three modules and will be taught at the basic and advanced levels. So also, besides the, uh, the language, the Mandarin language, of course, they, they will improve in the end, right? But I, would like, I also like to, um, to do some like cultural exchange, yes, because Taiwan is in Asia and it's far away from here, the Caribbean area. So I will introduce some like the culture of Taiwan, the festival or the lifestyles in Taiwan so that I, can, I want to help the learners understand more, get a better understanding of Taiwan. Yes. Okay. Over the years, a number of St. Lucian students have benefited from free education in Taiwan. Ambassador of the Republic of China Taiwan to St. Lucia, His Excellency Peter Chai Yanshan, says his government is pleased to offer assistance to the government of St. Lucia in the area of capacity building. Uh, in terms of Mandarin, uh, I think um, Taiwan and St. Lucia are longtime friends and also uh, constructive uh, partners. Uh, we establish a lot of uh, projects that is really uh, good for the uh, benefit of uh, all solutions and in line with the national development of uh, solution government. And uh, besides that, uh, we want to uh, enhance a mutual understanding uh, between our two peoples. And for that, uh, most important is to know each other's culture, each other's uh, uh, philosophy. Permanent Secretary in the Department of the Public Service, Ms. Peggy Ann Sudat, has expressed gratitude to the government of the Republic of China, Taiwan, for making the delivery of the online Mandarin program possible. St. Lucians over many years have visited Taiwan for meetings, training, and cultural exchanges. Learning Mandarin will not only strengthen social and cultural exchanges, but will also help break language barriers. We have seen an overwhelming interest evident in the two, over 200 applications received thus far. I would like to take this opportunity to wish all participants well. Every year, the government of the Republic of China, Taiwan, hosts a cultural exchange workshop in Taiwan for public officers. However, the program had to be suspended last year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. From the Communications Unit of the Department of the Public Service, Julita Peter reporting. Stay with us when we return the latest weather report. <laughs>